these little devices are a pair of balans. Balans means uh, balanced to unbalanced. It's a little conversion unit, usually with a transformer inside. And here's what they do. If you've got a remote camera some considerable distance away and you've got a monitor um, that you want to connect to that camera, you can use, instead of running separate power cables and uh, coaxial video cables, you can use standard data cable and you plug it in to one unit, plug it into the other unit, and that lets you send power over the cable, plus it also gives you the video signal over the cable. And the way it achieves this is it uh, usually is a transformer, not for the power, but just for the video, that couples onto the cable so they're electrically separate, but they still get the signal through. Let me show you what I mean by that, and then we'll open these up and see what's inside. A really good way of demonstrating this is probably with a problem that we've all come across at some point. It's connecting laptops to amplifiers. So if you've got a laptop, and most laptops don't have a ground, they often have the uh, the mains plug going to the little power supply, and the laptop itself is isolated from ground, and sometimes you get a slight tingle off them just because of electrical leakage through the power supply. So if you take your audio cable, and I'm just showing one channel in this instance, uh, as opposed to like left and right, and you connect to an amplifier with a standard, say for instance, a standard headphone socket to a uh, line-in connector, then it connects the general chassis with one core and it connects the audio signal with the other. The amplifier might be grounded or it might just be on a different sort of uh, power supply that they both have different interactions with each other. And what can happen is that in the case of a grounded amplifier and the laptop, it's not just sending the audio, but it's also sending that electrical noise produced with power supply along that cable and you end up with lots of sort of strange buzzing, hissing noises from the activity of the laptop and also uh, the mains reference, the slight mains leakage through that. The way to solve that in the case of the audio application is to put in a audio isolation transformer. What this does is it presents a winding and a transformer to the laptop that looks just like a set of headphones and it set, has a, another winding which is matched to the amplifier that looks like a line in. And that couples the audio signal across, but because there's no direct electrical connection, because it's a transformer with two separate windings, it isolates the two and that noise can't travel along between them and cause problems. This is also useful even if you have a grounded piece of equipment, because if you have a long run of cable and you've got two separate grounds in different areas of the building, they can carry a lot of electrical noise just through interference suppression equipment, coupling that noise onto the, the earth or ground connection. The other advantage of a um, balanced circuit, because this is the balanced aspect that it can, uh, if it's connected to the input, then the balance type uh, arrangement, because the signal is basically going that direction and that direction, and then vice versa for the AC, it uh, means that if you have an adjacent cable that's radiating a lot of noise onto that, and it juice, induces a current uh, in both directions, in those wires, then they cancel each other out because one is effectively pushing, one is pulling. And it just results in an easy way of connecting equipment without that electrical noise. I use an uh, uh, audio isolation transformer on my laptop to connect to the uh, speakers because uh, without it, it, it is very noisy. Right, tell you what, let's open these up. The other option for these, you can get uh, the audio and video version. I thought that's what I was getting here. It doesn't really matter. It did kind of list that, but I don't think they knew what they were selling. That's fine. These look as though they're glued together, so I'm going to give them a reassuring squeeze with a nice vice of knowledge and see if this makes crunchy noises. I don't know how easy these are going to get into. They strike me as being that horrible chewy plastic. This is where I'd normally give them a sharp tap with a pair of pliers, or hammer as we know it in the trade. But if this doesn't work, um, then I shall pause the video, which I think I'm going to do because I just know these are those chewy plastic ones that are very hard to open. And I shall smash the living bejesus out of them, and then I'll come back once I've done that. One moment, please. The cases have been smashed off. It is now time to explore, and I was completely wrong. 
I honestly thought the little transformers in these were going to be used to galvanically separate it, but they're not. They are purely impedance matching, which is a horrific science in its own right. So let's explore the circuitry and then I'll show you the schematic of these. We have the connector here. I've got the two modules side by side here, one up the other way. And the power wires come in and they go to two of those pairs. They don't try and treat them as twisted pairs. Just basically one full twisted pair is positive and one is negative. There is the facility to have the audio signal sent across another of those twisted pairs, but not uh, given the transformer treatment. But the video uh, signal, which is a very high frequency signal, this is probably why they've done it, goes to this little transformer. But ah, it's, a, it's a dark science. It's almost like radio science, uh, the wireless technology. It's a... Uh, the cable science is ridiculous. Uh, I'll, I'll provide a link to cable impedance on Wikipedia. It doesn't make good reading. It's not enjoyable reading at all, unless you're really geeky and into that. But the BNC connector basically goes to, one side of it goes to um, one of the windings, and the other goes to the other, passes through this little impedance matching transformer. It looks like it's a little toroid like this, and then goes to the connector, and then the other end does exactly the same thing. Anything else worth showing in this? Not really. I shall show you the schematic, which will not make sense of anything at all, because it's super high frequency signals being propagated along cables, which is just a nightmare. Let the scientists do that, so we just need to plug the cables in. So here's the, uh, well, there's the power for a start. Positive is going across the blue twisted pair. Negative is going across the brown twisted pair. The audio is going across the green twisted pair. Before the video signal goes across the orange twisted pair, it uh, goes through the transformer. So that each connection to the BNC connector is going through one winding. But why are they actually kind of opposing each other? That is tricky. I'm not sure the science behind that. Perhaps you could elaborate on that, on that for me in the comments. But it's going along the cable and then the same treatment at the other end. It must be to do with the fact it is such a high frequency signal that would have may maybe actually caused complications of a galvanic separation. Um, but that is what's in these units. I can't really go much further. I mean, that it looks so simple, but really the science behind it is absolutely not simple. The same with uh, the balanced uh, cables that we get for data networks, the RS485, and the termination resistors. That's all down to cable impedance and creating infinite uh, the apparent infinite length to avoid signal reflections. You're, at the frequencies we're talking about here, uh, reflections of signals from the cable ends actually become an issue. And you do have to match the characteristic impedance of the cable. Um, but this is it. It's interesting. As I say, I'll let the true experts on this technology chime in in the comments. But there we have it. That's the inside of two generic video balance units.